Good afternoon, hope you're all doing well. Uh, welcome back to the bird room. I'm Shane uh, from Direct Bird Products. I just want to talk quickly about birds molting and obviously molting the procedure and, and what can you expect. Uh, molting's never a good time for weaker birds. Chances are the weaker birds, uh, if there is any weak birds in your stock, you will probably lose them through the molt. The birds need to be um, fit and healthy in the molt to survive through. It is quite a stressful time for them. Um, what I'll just quickly run through is obviously time uh, the birds go to molt, but they're all different. Why they molt and, and what can you expect? Um, like I said, all birds are different. Um, I'm going to be talking uh, the fact of British birds, uh, fives, canaries, that type of size. Because obviously, when you when you look into the parrot size or zebra finch size, they're slightly different, but same type of procedure. So let's start with why do birds molt? Um, well, anyone who knows uh, certain birds throughout the year, um, especially green finches, uh, birds in flights pull the feathers, green finch cocks pull the feathers on greeny ends quite a lot, um, and they look, do, certain birds do look quite tatty through the breeding season. Not only that, um, a lot of the ends tend to lose uh, the feathers around the cloaca, the, um, where they're losing the, where they uh, having the eggs and this helps obviously uh, in, to incubate the eggs better so they lose the feathers and a lot of the ends will put feathers off, off the cocks and the young ones anyway uh, to build nests with so obviously they, they need to uh, renew the feathers uh, for a, a strong winter to keep the warmth in through winter um, but as of obviously bearing in mind green finches and um, canaries uh, usually they would start molting around six weeks old. Well, I have said uh, in, in the videos that I've been doing some of my birds now are starting to molt, the chaffinches, crossbills, the young um, the young canaries, the young green finches are all, all in the molt now, heavily in the molt, There's, there is feathers everywhere every time you come in but that's, that's part of bird keeping. Um, so yeah, like I said, they would start about six weeks old, not dead on six weeks, you don't say four to two days, that's it, they're in the mold. Every bird is different. Um, it's on an average of six weeks. Um, that would tend to last um, in these type of birds, again, between five, six weeks. But obviously the smaller type of canaries could even come through faster, the bigger type can take longer. You do get uh, some birds stuck in the mold, but I'm not going to go into that. That's just too much complications, and everyone's going to get mixed up by certain things. So we're just talking about the uh, standard molting season. So um, say yes. Yeah, so these are in the mold now. I could expect them to be finished between four weeks' time, and obviously the the younger, uh, the older ones, because there's obviously two two different um, types in there. These there's the first round and obviously there's some that was later in the first round but these in here, the first round ones, a couple of them anyway and some down there we have to be rabbiting on that is so basically yeah around six weeks um, sometimes seven weeks for the bigger feather birds such as maybe Norwich Yorkies the bigger types obviously they've got to produce more feathers your Norwich especially the buffer birds they are full of feather um, birds can um, molt out faster and I have done this before it's not it's not something I'd advise um, you can actually rush a bird through the molt by reducing the light hours and obviously tricking them to thinking it's coming into autumn winter time it's not something I'd, uh, I'd, I would say to do but you know it, the light hours that um, is the aspect as, as the season goes on the birds will naturally go into the molt anyway um, as it comes to obviously through the malt, what would I be feeding them? Personally, I just give them exactly the same food, uh, vitamins, water, fresh water. 
exactly as I've been doing uh, through breeding season. I've got used to that routine of the soak seed and egg food and obviously the peas in the in the feed and, and obviously the water with the vitamins in. If at any point they would need vitamins as a booster uh, or like a tonic, it would be through the malt. But I, I obviously give them the treats like maybe some fruit, um, apples for instance. Um, baths, baths is a must uh, in the malt. In a perfect world, perfect scenario, uh, if I was to have my own way with doing them, all my birds would be in flights for the malt. It, it helps them through the malt faster, uh, obviously because they're going to be flying around a lot more and it keeps them a lot fitter. Last thing you want is a bird in a 12 by 12 cage or two or three um, and not being able to fly because it would take longer to malt out that way. So, like I said, perfect scenario, in a flight, fresh bath on every day, and they're going to fly through that malt in no time. Uh, but like I said, every bird is different, and if you do have weaker birds in there, unfortunately you will lose them. When it comes to, um, such as your green finches, um, siskins as well, and, and some other birds, I... As soon as I see them in the malt, um, the green finches now, um, green finches there and there, uh, they're already on baycocks. And what I do with my baycocks, two mil per litre. So basically, um, one of these, in fact, that's that's a bit remaining from when I started them on it yesterday. In there is four mil, because obviously it's a two litre pot. Two days a week once a month so basically two days come off it then till the month after till the month after remember baycocks is quite strong um, and don't be giving it out willy-nilly to birds that don't need it but on the other hand don't neglect birds that will need it I mean a few years ago siskins never used to need baycocks but now it's, it's one thing that I won't uh, let them go through the moat without I know a friend a couple of years ago, I was talking to Matt about this last night. Um, and a, a couple of years ago, one of my friends lost quite a lot of birds, a lot of fives, uh, going light. So obviously I sorted him some baycocks out. Not had a problem since then. But yeah, that is a must um, for your green finches, in my opinion. Baycocks is the only one I'd use. There is other uh, sulfur-based uh, products out there. Nothing wrong with them. But for me, uh, once I find something that works for me, I stick to it. So, birds are coming, um, they're in the flight, they're in the molt, they get the fresh baths of water, the seed, daily. This is when, uh, well, towards the end, this is what I'm talking about now, they're coming towards the end of the molt now, and I, I can start picking out, especially with the green finches, um, which ones I'd had. Um, earmarked for showing. In my breeding records over there I do earmark them or like I've said before I would put um, one of the rubber rings on if I see it uh, when it's come out of the nest and it looks a bit tasty I would put a ring on it. This is when I'd have a, a look at them to start um, thinking about showcase training them. I don't tend to do much um, showcase training uh, before or while they're in the malt. If I'm going to do it I'll have a look at them before they go in the malt and as soon as they come out of the malt. At least that way they're not getting stressed being caught up in a flight or a flight cage into a show cage for an hour then back and obviously repeating that procedure um, a couple of times a week it would stress the birds out and that's one thing you want to avoid uh, whilst birds are in the malt is less stress the better. Uh, so yeah, once it comes out of, obviously, um, coming out of the malt, like I said, they would malt faster in the flight. I'd have a, a quick look in the show cage, and at least I can start picking ones for the show bench. Well, basically, that's it with malting. It, it wasn't a, a big feature. All it is is just a couple of people have asked me, what do I feed through the malt? What do I do during the malt? 
and it, it, it's as simple as that. It's not hard work uh, for us. It's harder for the birds to actually get through the mould. One thing I didn't mention actually. Um, young birds. The molting procedure. Um, they're called unflighted for a reason. Young birds don't tend to lose their flight feathers. And that's why they're called unflighted. Because they've never dropped a flight feather in the first year. And you will see that... Um, the adult birds, obviously, imagine colour feeding uh, a red factor. You colour feeding it uh, cow for red. And they, what will happen is, obviously, um, the adult birds, once they've been colour fed, the, the wing bars will go red. The current year birds won't, they will stay in the nest feather, i.e. The, the feathers they produced whilst in the nest. So that's obviously why they're called unflighted obviously a lot of people know now know them as cutting your bread but still some people still use unflighted birds so yeah that's it I, just one thing i totally forgot to mention so yes that's it for today um friday is, it's not going to be this friday the friday after uh we're going to take a quick look round in here possibly time depending on me and mark i might try and get down there or get Mark to do um, some pictures and some filming of his birds at the moment, see how he's getting on. But it's all time dependent. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope this has helped you because um, there is a lot of newcomers to our channel that are new to birds. And, and it, the little bits that I am doing, I hope it is helping everybody out. So, thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of the Wednesday.